Hey, welcome you new Venusian artists. Steve Maeda here, one of your instructors from Venusian Arts with this exclusive presentation, a uh, presentation that is for Formula 69. And we're also calling this a presentation of MD360, the program that I created uh, for you guys to basically workshop through all this. But hey, this one's for free and I want you guys to get results. So what is Formula 69? Look, it's taking all this cool stuff that we're learning on social dynamics, you know, how to meet women, attract them, but in the simplest way, take the pure core social dynamic, learn how to implement it into yourself authentically and get great, great sex in your life in a very, very easy way. And we're kind of like hijacking and simplifying a lot of the stuff that uh, social dynamics have been known for. Also, thank you so much for your emails and your feedback on that. Of course, you can email me at Steve at venusianarts.com and uh man i really appreciate it you know some of the guys are saying man this sounds so practical this is awesome this is a breath of fresh air i also got some feedback of some people looking up the old lay reports that we used to do uh i come from like a, a lineage of guys in dallas you know captain jack and those old school dudes and uh they were going like man you guys in like 2007 and 2008 were figuring out stuff that people are just talking about now with like sexual framing and the quickness and the analyzing and the man I just lived it I thought it was fun but uh they were like god this is so crazy and uh you know one of the reasons why I'm doing this whole formula 69 thing was because a lot of people were asking me about the red stack which was a famous product of mine um in any case look we'll talk about all that you can read about that in the pdf download that you can find on the va website wherever you're watching this video uh one of the hot links yada 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 but the red stack, basically a customized routine stack. I don't really do them anymore. I'd encourage you to do MD360 instead. That's a product of Venusian Arts. I would encourage you to do the full service one where you do 15 hours of calls with me and the rest of the group of the guys who are on it uh, every week. Every week, 15 hours minimum. Sometimes it's like 20 uh, rather than looking at any you know stack stuff. And uh, man, it's just an amazing thing uh, that, that we have going on here. Anyway, let's take a look at this. So what the heck are we doing today? We are going to be looking at how we can transition from an opener to rapport. Now, this actually, I'm sorry, I digress. How we can go from an opener into a transition that will set us up for rapport. Now, one of the things that is so important about this, okay, is that in this formula that we're doing with Formula 69, very simple, meet, connect, get some rapport, get a date, get a kiss, have sex, have great sex. And we have videos breaking that all that down, okay? And the general idea is that if I can meet a woman, I can connect, okay? If I can connect, I can get rapport. And if I can get rapport, I can get a date. If I can get a date, I can get a kiss. If I can get a kiss, I can physically escalate to some awesome sex. We can make that a lifestyle. It's super simple, man. It's very, very, very simple. So what we're covering today is this cool little moment of right when you open, on how you can escalate to, man, make that connection so that we're in rapport, you know, so that we can move to the next best thing, which is to communicate within rapport or sex. Very, very cool. Uh, the next video is going to be on rapport and getting deeper into that. And that gets, that gets pretty, pretty complex and crazy. A lot of people think it might be too difficult, the route that I'm going to go. But if you watch the opening video, you know, which, you know, it's video one in the series in this video, and really get this stuff, man, you'll have, you'll have an awesome, awesome social dynamics and dating life all set up for you. Just trust me on it. Do it. It does not take long to get functionality into it. It's badass. That's what we're doing here in Formula 69. Let's move into a little review. Opening, all right? Remember from the last video, if you can get somebody to pay attention to you for 10 to 15 seconds. Look, I just taught a workshop this weekend, uh, you know, Basically, I was telling the guy this beforehand. I said, look, opening, all you need to care about is 10 to 15 seconds. You know, if you can get that, you can transition. So let's just do that. And he's like, no, that's impossible. And I'm like, man, do a few of these body language things, whatever. He got it. That's the truth. 
If you get somebody to pay attention to you for 10 to 15 seconds, you know, maybe give yourself 30. You've accomplished the goal of approaching. It does not matter if you did it direct, indirect, if you did it in this high pressure environment. Who cares, man? You got somebody to pay attention to you. Don't worry about value. Don't worry about all this kind of weighing the scales of attraction. Look, get somebody to pay attention to you. That is so key because all we need to do is to transition to either rapport or seduction. Now, in Formula 69, we're going on the rapport road because, and we'll talk about this in just a second, but rapport is just a great safe ground. You can skip it a lot of times, but almost every time you can get rapport. So it's just safer and more high percentage to get there. So the real purpose of opening is basically, man, how can I transition to rapport or seduction? Now, social dynamics begins at the transition. The reason why I say that is anybody can open. Okay, we see this all the time on infield videos with, you know, the dudes doing crazy stuff and they open and we go, oh my God, those guys are like gods. Well, here's the fact of the matter. Those guys didn't get laid. When I was starting out and maybe they do every once in a while, but man, like go and find them. Go find the old, you know, LRs from way back in the day that, that I'd put up. I went under the name El Topo, if you didn't know that. But uh, God, maybe, you know, we'll make a PDF with those LRs and stuff like that so you can read them. Uh, cause it's just all these guys that have, have really gotten back to me on it in this last week. Uh, but all we cared about was how we could have a good time, be men, get sexual, have, you know, sex and the dating life that every man had imagined. And that was basically my life, 2006, seven, eight, nine. That was it, man. That is what we did. The interesting thing about that is opening did not matter. However, we could talk to the girl was what mattered. The social dynamic began when we would actually start to transition. And we transition in all these different directions. Sometimes we'd frame, there's something called sexual framing. It's a very particular type of framing. You can look up Captain Jack for that. He's kind of the guy that, that coined it. He actually is the guy that you know, made it what it is today. Um, we might do stuff like, you know, do these comfort blasters and get into these insane amounts of rapport. But the social dynamic, the thing which made things so special and interesting about how human beings interacted started with that transition. It started with after that 10, 15 seconds it was real quick. And we'll tell, you know, everybody, in fact, I tell you all right now. You should know whether or not you're going to have sex with a girl or be friends with a girl or kind of know what the relationship's going to be easily within two minutes. And I would even argue that the first 30 seconds. You should be able to sense that. The only thing that will keep you from that is the experience of that. So let's get into this. Why rapport? Why the hell are we going for rapport and not seduction? Well, easy. All social dynamics can come from rapport. Okay. So sometimes you can get uh, seduction really quick. Like if the situation's there, if the woman is, you know, really horny and you're really horny and you have the right logistics and all that sort of stuff, it happens, you know, it happens maybe one out of 20 times, one out of 20 times you connect, you know, you can skip right to seduction. Maybe it's one out of five times. I don't know. I mean, actually say it's like, was like every 10th girl or something like that, you know, 10% of the time that might happen for me where we just would go very quickly. But what was more likely is that nine out of 10 of those times, I would make a connection with them. And then within that connection, it would move very quickly to seduction. Okay, so maybe 20 minutes in, maybe two hours in, maybe, maybe four hours. But within that four hour time period, we'd really like, you know, we'd either get later, we wouldn't. It was pretty much established. So the interesting thing about rapport is that all social dynamics can come from it. Friendship, uh, sales, so those, those of you that are, help, that are in a sales field or some sort of customer service field, dating, of course, seduction, of course, building a social circle, these are all things that you know, rapport will help you with. If you can get what we're actually talking about here, these transitions and why we're transitioning in these particular ways, it's gonna help you is a life skill, okay? That is super, super important. Uh, whereas if you just learn seduction, you know, you're going to be like one of those guys that annoys people most of the time. I mean, this is just what happens with dudes that get really into pickup as they, you know, dress up and they get too aggressive with women. You know, all that stuff does work, but it uh, it kind of makes you, it works at the expense of being kind of an odd guy. Whereas this, you'll just be a normal guy doing it and it really doesn't take much longer. I mean, you know, this guy's doing all the rapid escalation stuff that's super aggressive and, you know, can polarize people in a big way. You know what? They're getting laid and two hours. Hey, 
With this, it, it you know, maybe they're getting laid in 10 minutes to two hours time period. This is a good, safe, consistent route that if you get it down, uh, your time from meet to close will be anywhere from that 10 minute period to a four hour period. It shouldn't be more than that. In any case, not too bad of an investment, right? All right, so rapport, the life skill, learn it. It is gonna change your life for the rest of your life. That's awesome. Imagine that, having a way that you could communicate with people based off of like what you do after 10 to 15 seconds of when you first meet somebody. God, that's awesome. That's awesome. That it will just better all of your relationships and communications based off of that. Okay, so what we're gonna learn today, very simple, three different types of transitions that come off of any type of opener. Remember in the last video, we covered three different types of opening. There was a passive way, there was an indirect way, and there was a direct way. It doesn't matter which one, it's whatever works. None's better than the other. Uh, I gave you all sorts of opinions on that in the, uh, that first video. So the three transitions are basically this, a buffer, compliments, and unique qualities. So those can be kind of self-explanatory, but let's break these down a little bit, okay? If you learn how to open, and I just wanna make this really, really clear, you know, of course, if you learn to, to open and connect with people and build rapport in transition, you're gonna be learning a life skill, but your first 30 seconds to two minutes, okay, of meeting somebody are basically going to move from like a 50 50 you know like if you open somebody you know maybe they open or not but they're going to jump up if you learn how to transition if you can transition and implement these transitions and you don't just have to do one you can combine them do all three use two but you just need it to to turn that page so you can get more attention and move fully into rapport if you can do that your open rate is going to go way up it's going to go way beyond 50 percent, even into like that 75 percent range of course, nothing's 100% unless you're just doing something illegal. <laughs> and who wants to do that? All right, so let's cover a few things here when we are talking about social dynamics. One of the biggest problems with social dynamics is our view on resistance or rejection. Okay, anytime you show intent, okay, and approaching is intent. But this goes into sexual escalation. The first time you go for the kiss, uh, this will come up over and over again. Intent basically equals resistance. Whenever you show intent, approach, you know, to qualifying on heavy qualifiers, to move, to set up a date, anything which is moving on this path of, of what you want in terms of a, a, it doesn't even have to be a sexual relationship, but of course, sex is the obvious, but moving towards sex, you're going to get resistance, Okay. A lot of times in seduction, people say resistance is terrible. It's this horrible thing. Man, God, how do I deal with it? How do I bypass it? Wrong. If you are getting resistance, that means you're on the right path. You're supposed to get it. You should expect it. All right. It is a good, it, it, it's great. It means you're being a man and she's being a woman. That doesn't mean you're an asshole and you're just mean to people. It means that whenever you are going to show what it is you truly want, you're going to get a pushback. You're going to get that. All right. So resistance equals sexual tension. That means that when you resist somebody, you're, or I'm sorry, when you show intent to somebody and they resist you, sexual tension is building. Okay. Now let's get this straight. If a girl says, no, fuck off. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to her. But if she's like, well, wait a minute, you say that to everybody. She starts to give you those shit tests, but she stays around. The key is that she stays around. This is that sweet spot. That's the resistance you want, okay? Resistance equals sexual tension. You get this, it turns into that curiosity, gives you a moment to talk. And man, if you're getting that, that means you have a window to show yourself is perhaps a potential sexual partner with her. If you follow this path, you'll get there, okay? So why we're actually covering all this resistance equals, uh, or I'm sorry, intent equals resistance, resistance equals sexual tension is because whenever we open, we're going to get resistance. It might be slight, it might be big, but we're going to get it. Again, if she says, fuck off, get away from me, you don't need to be a dick. But if she's saying, well, okay, whatever, do you say that to everybody? Oh, hold on, hold on, I'm talking to my friends, but she's still allowing you time and space to be there and it's not a direct no. 
Man, that is your beauty, okay? So let's look at this. Transitioning is the first release of that tension. And we begin to move on the path of seduction. We begin to move on this path of interacting with femininity and masculinity. And it's just such a cool thing, right? And this is where we need to relax the approach. So when we approach, there's always like a startling. And we'll get into this as we cover the examples. But we say like, hey, I got a question for you. And they're like, what? what? Yeah, huh? They're kind of confused. We got to relax that. That first 30 seconds, that's got to be massaged in there. All right. So this is why transitioning is so key. Okay. Now, let's take a look at this. Transition one, the buffer. Okay, so when we transition, you know, if you look here, a lot of times a girl might be like, you know, this, like, we, you know, we, we, or I'm sorry, when we open and we're kind of waiting for that transition to happen, we say, hey, look, you know, I got a question for you. Or we say like, look, you are just really attractive. I had to come over and talk to you. And there's a little bit of doubt. There's that hint, all right? There's that resistance, that small amount that is beginning this path of sexual tension. And if we're a good man, we'll alleviate that. So let's look at the buffer, okay? Super, super simple. Bam, tension, transition, relaxation, examples. So basically here, we have a passive opener. Remember that from our first example or from our first uh, presentation here. We just say, hey, how are you doing? Remember, a passive opener is just simply saying hello. We're just trying to get functionality with staying close with somebody. And anytime we might, you know, uh, say hello to somebody, say, hey, how you doing? You know, they'll be like, what? Why are you talking to me? So you got to say something else. All right. Well, in this case, we're going to do a buffer. All right. And this is actually interesting because I have a little bit of a story about this. But in this example of the buffer, we say, oh, look, hey. I'm sorry, I can be bold at times. I didn't mean to scare you. You know, my mom always warned me about that. You know, you wouldn't happen to be close to your mom or your dad. Which one? So basically what's happening there is we're actually moving into a way where we could start, you know, getting rapport here uh, with a technique called rapport cycling. We'll cover it in the next video. That's, a, that's some bomb stuff. You're going to want to watch that, but you got to understand and do this first. This is very, very simple. Anytime we say hello to somebody, anytime, you know, we present our intent, there's going to be like a hesitation. We need the buffer to uh, kind of manage that. And what's happening here is the buffer is just kind of like an apology. Now, a lot of you pick up guys are going like, you can't apologize. Jesus, I got to be high value. Look, do you want to get laid or not? All right. Let me just tell you, human beings were born to have sex with each other. And women and men that are heterosexual have a lot of natural advantages of wanting to have sex with each other. All the social stuff or social value stuff is based on society and culture. Don't worry about it. All right. If you want to talk evolution, that's why you should shoot me an email. <laughs> anyway, uh, the, a lot of people, I think, got it wrong. And when they were coming up with those ideas back in 2003, you know, look, that was a long time ago. So that was 12 years ago. Uh, possibly more, a lot's changed. There's a lot more examples of how we can make this, you know, sex man, woman thing work. The funny story I have about this opener is that I was talking to one of my buddies last night, actually. So we just got done with this big workout or a workshop and all the guys, the cool thing about workshops in Austin is a ton of people uh, help out. There's just great coaches, you know, that uh, work with me and I kind of know everybody in the industry. I'm uh, the host of the 21 convention. And so there's just a lot of help. It's like kind of like client three coaches on every single one of the workshops, which is usually the opposite. It's usually three clients to one instructor, but uh, we don't necessarily advertise or guarantee that. But we were talking about it because one of the dudes is like this kind of hippie dude in Austin. And he was like, he was like, look, you got to think about how you can say like, hey, how's it going to somebody in a way where it's going to work for you. And he was basically saying, you know, when Steve does it, he can be up, you know, closer to somebody like I get really close and, you know, I'll have kind of like a lower tonality and be like, hey, how you doing? You know, I want to I want to try and seed for that presence of sexuality with my delivery. So ah, look, sorry, sorry. I didn't I, I can be too bold at times. You know, uh, I, I just weird I have a weird job, but it just gets in the way of stuff. Hey, do you actually think what you do for work changes how you meet people? OK, so my job is, you know, teaching social dynamics and talking about sex. I want to get on that thread as quick as possible. So my buddy, who's kind of a hippie, he stands further back, okay? And he's like, hey, you know, 
feedback. I mean, I try and get as close as possible, even in the daytime when I'm talking to somebody, unless the situation calls for it. But he's like, hey, how's it going? Oh, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I weird you out? I didn't really mean to, but I just I look, I travel a lot. I, I went to school in San Francisco. I just got a weird way of talking to people. Hey, let me ask you, like, how long have you lived in Austin? So what you're seeing here in these buffers uh, off of a passive interaction, I just gave you two different versions of how it would be done. One, how I would do it and one, how my buddy would do it. Who's got that kind of hippie vibe is that we're in our presence. You know, we're saying, how are you doing? Just very simply. We're backing off just to chill the surprise out. And we're actually moving to a question. In his case, he's talking about traveling in different places and how it changes somebody's personality. Why? Because we want to get to that unique quality, which we'll talk about later. That's just so key. When we're talking to that side of that person, it's the side of them that makes decisions. It's the side of them that never gets validated. It's the side of them that if we can communicate with it, is going to decide whether we're going to, they're going to go on a date with us or not. And so when I'm asking stuff or it's written here, like, you know, are you close with your mom or your dad? We're going for a deeper part of their personality uh, just off of the opener. And the buffer allows us to do that. Uh, for myself, I say, do you think how you work, you know, affects how you meet people? Well, hey, what I do is I work as a dating and a seduction coach. And I want to talk about sex, man. Women find it tremendously interesting, actually. And uh, it's just a, it's a very, very cool thing. Uh, so I want to move in that direction strategically, immediately. Why wait? I don't care about some DHV story or anything like that. I care about tactically moving to the next part. Formula 69, people. If I can get rapport, I can get a date. If I can get a date, I can get a kiss. If I can get a kiss, I can get a close. Boom. Easy. All right. So here's an example of an indirect opener. We say, hey, I have a question. It's about men and women, but actually, hold on. Let me start over. Look. I realize that might sound weird to a stranger, you know, but strangers actually give you the best answers. But anyway, my name's Steve. What's your name? Okay. She introduces herself. She says, my name is Maria. Ha ha. That's my wife's name. And um, then basically uh, she's, then you continue on with the opening. You say, well, look, it actually is a question about uh, like how different attitudes can attract different types of people. Okay, so there we're actually doing it within the opener. But once again, the buffer is a slight backing off. You know, just, just hey, cool. Yeah, didn't mean to surprise you. Why? Because anytime we approach or we interrupt somebody, we're going to, uh, there's just going to, resistance is going to hit. Resistance is just some tension that I need to ease. I need to relax the opener. Here in a direct opener, uh, we could go up to somebody and we'd say, hey, look, you are totally adorable. I decided I had to come and talk to you. And actually, this is funny because this opener is, uh, uh, we were talking about different openers last night and again, a guy who is a very different guy. Uh, man, just an amazing dude. His name's Lewis. Uh, you can actually see his videos on the testimonials of, you know, what some of the, the workshops that we do, you know, do. And he's just like, my favorite opener is to say, hey, I've been watching you and I decided I had to come and talk to you. Or, hey, I noticed you. And I decided I had to come talk to you. And he's like, works every time in a cafe. <laughs> That's just what he said to, to one of the guys asking about openers. But one thing that he also does is his buffer is, oh, look, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, probably a lot of people come up and talk to you and hit on you. And I think that's one of the most insulting things you can do to a woman. Because the most attractive qualities about a woman are so not the physical. And if they are only the physical, then she's a bad woman. And he just gets himself, see how it's moving right to rapport, how he's going there. Man, amazing, amazing guy. And this guy, mainly a cafe bar guy, not super high stimuli in the clubs, but how you would do this is just be like, Hey, look, you are, you're beautiful. I have to come and talk to you. Oh man. Did, did that offend you? That totally shouldn't come here. Let me ask you something. Come here, come here, come here, come here. And really, especially the higher the stimuli, the quicker, you isolate and the more your body language will carry over with that. Um, another video, another time where we discuss that. But basically what you see here is in these examples, using the buffer to back off. Excellent. You guys should really get this, get this down. It's very simple. You open as soon as you notice some sort of tension because it will happen. Just say, oh, sorry, did I offend you? I didn't mean to. Sometimes I can have a big presence. Oh, sorry, did I offend you? God, you know, how I grew up, it's just different. I grew up with three brothers. Oh, man, I'm sorry. Did I offend you? How I grew up, I grew up with sisters, so it's just 
I get too comfortable with women. Use your life and how you think and how you talk to, uh, you know, what your experiences to move into a conversation and a conversational thread that actually empowers you. All right. Big time. Very easy to do. Get this down. It will make your open rate go through the roof. All right. Transition two is the compliment. What? We can't do that. That makes us weak. We can't compliment women. That ups their value. A 10 doesn't care about that. Look, let me tell you something. Stop. You want to get laid or not? You want to have sex or not? This is a lot more simple map. I get it. You know, if girls think they're the greatest thing in the world, then you got to neg them and yada, yada, yada. If you want to learn how to neg, you should watch the uh, the video we made on that. Uh, perhaps we'll put a link on the blog post that talks about this. But a compliment, the cool, beautiful thing about it is, is it just changes the game. It just changes it. And the best way to use a compliment is to notice it in real time. So perhaps you're watching a girl and she has like amazing like presence. But when you go and you open, let's say you do a passive opener and you say, hey, you wouldn't happen to know what time it is, would you? God, man. I get so sorry. I get nervous when I talk to people who intimidate me. You know, you have you have amazing presence. It's just really cool. Anyway, yeah, what time is it? Cool. So where where are you from? You know, and you can move on to these kind of AFC style questions, especially because that compliment is it's kind of like stating intent. Um, you know, I'll actually talk about this when we get to the direct one, but another great opener. This is awesome, man. It's just an old school thing. It works in clubs. It works just so well. Again, you have to have passable delivery on these things, but you don't need to have excellent, but practice in front of the mirror and do all that sort of stuff. Get some time and field testing it out. Test it, test it. It's so awesome, especially when you start getting good experience and interactions and you start racking up different lays or dates or whatever it is. The motivation to test things is just badass. Build that community, man. Don't build a community of weird internet trolling and hate it's like god man it's it's really cool when when minds start to you know manifest this stuff and really build on it but you could say hey can i give you a compliment and then they stop and they say uh yeah and there's that weird tension of like not knowing what it is and then you can actually give the compliment that dress is beautiful but if we can get them to have that choice like hey uh can i give you a compliment is it going to weird you out this, you open with this open in a club in the daytime you do it at whole foods wherever hey can i give you a compliment wait for them to reply and give whatever compliment like you you have just a really beautiful face and a beautiful smile like one in a in an awesome way like in a gentlemanly way i mean that hey what is your name man Oh, so good. So good. And setting yourself up for rapport. And hey, let me tell you, if you were to skip rapport and do that seduction thing, that kind of like one out of 20, one out of 10 girl, this still sets you up for it. <laughs> All right. So um, indirect opener. Hey, I have a question for you. What do you think is the most attractive quality about somebody? Is it something internal or external? And then you might just pause when she's thinking about it because she's not going to be able to answer that right away. She's going to be, what, what? To say, oh, man, look, when you think, I hate to interrupt, but you have the cutest look on your face. It's awesome. But no, you know, what do you actually think? Do you, like, guys always say it's the external, but women always say it's the internal. But in a relationship, I think it might turn out to be opposite. You know, so you just move on, move on, you know, to the, uh, uh, a deeper meaning of the question so that you can, well, we'll talk about it in rapport, but get to the side of her that is actually making decisions and connections and all that sort of stuff. All right. So direct wise, you could say, oh man, I would kick myself if I didn't come and talk to you. Look, my name's Steve. What's your name? Okay. And uh, then we might want to give that compliment and just say, you know, most, the most attractive women don't seem to have as much confidence as you do, okay? Now, what I wanted to actually say about direct openers, one of the coolest things, and I brought this up in the uh, previous video, is the old school guys who are teaching direct game, not the new school guys. The new school guys, man, it's like a fad, right? But the old school guys were doing it so they could carry a conversation with how they were actually, uh, you know, like they'd shock somebody with being direct and then they'd calm down, right? The, the girl would calm down and they'd ask what they'd say in AFC questions. You're the hottest woman in the world. 
where are you from? And they'd get the girl to talk. This was actually like a really great, great, you know, tactic for them to do. Why? Because it had that alleviation built in. You're actually seeing a buffer right in that or seeing the tension be re re released from their bold opener. You are beautiful. I have to talk to you. What is your name? My name's Steve. Are you from here? Huh, huh. And then the girls would start to open up and talk. One of the reasons why is they were allowed that time to decompress. The sexual tension had been released. Very cool, very cool. All right, this last transition, unique qualities. Let me just tell you, this is the most important one. Unique qualities is something that you need to get. It will help you move to rapport as we will learn, we will learn in the next uh, presentation that the tipping points of rapport, this is one of them, meaning that it tips, like you can be in a conversation and it will just switch to rapport. Unique qualities. What that means is, is noticing something about somebody that's unique. A unique quality could be how they dress, sure, but it's not just how they dress, it affects how they think. That's why it's like you heard when I was going over those examples. Um, it's like, man, do you think how somebody's job affects how they think? And then I can talk about my job, which is about sex and relationships and women and you know men and yada, 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 which everybody likes to talk about. But I've also framed it around the idea that it affects how you think. So whatever job she has, it might affect her personality and things perhaps maybe she never talks about. Things that she wonders about, knows very much, but can't really articulate to her friends. Man, if I can have that conversation with her, I am having a conversation to the core of her and we're 30 seconds into the conversation. Man, what amazing, amazing things. If I'm going with my buddy and he's got that hippie vibe and he's like, oh yeah, you know, man, do you think like where you are from and where you've traveled to and lived affects who you are and your personality? And they say, yeah, I don't know. You could easily say, well, L.A. people are like this, Dallas people like that, Austin people like that, San Francisco, Seattle, New York. But, man, you don't seem like a typical, like, you said you were from Michigan. Like, you don't seem like a Michigan suburbs person. Like, you, you have a warm heart. I'm starting to move, you know, towards those unique qualities. So let's look at the examples. Opener, passive opener. Remember, passive opener, very simple opener, nothing really attached to it. Man, it's a really nice day out today, okay? Simple passive opener, but then we switch to that unique quality and we say, you know, I've always had a certain idea about women who pick amazing shoes, kind of like those, right? It doesn't just say something about their personality, but I think it affects like the type of men you choose. I bet you your friends don't, don't ever like the guys that you date. They, they think you have a bad picker, okay? Now, this is a little bit more complex and advanced, but man, and you know, essentially a cold read. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Well, I promise to make some videos on that because we have some awesome information on that at MD360 and those different programs. But uh, look, it's just going to that unique quality about her, her shoes. But not just saying you have nice shoes or your shoes match your belt. That's amazing. It's like, man, how you pick shoes, I think... That has a lot to do with how you pick men. Tell me if I'm wrong. Okay, you can have a discussion about that. You could be wrong about it. That's fine if you're wrong about it. But you want to talk about those types of things with her because why? That's the deeper side of the woman that makes decisions. And let me just tell you this too. If you want to talk to really hot women, like if you want to talk to hired guns. So if anybody was to ask me, like let's do a lay competition with uh, you know, only 10s, I would go and I would do this. It would be very easy for me. Unless somebody was like at my skill set and then it might be a little bit competitive. I talked to waitresses. I talked to strippers. I talked to girls who worked in different like bartenders. And that's all I would talk about is stuff like this. I'd immediately go to it. Why? Because they all know they're hot. But who talks to them about the deeper sides of them? They all know they're hot. But do they know they're beautiful? Cool stuff. So I would just move totally, immediately, immediately to a unique quality. Indirect opener. Hey, I have a question for you about relationships. Okay, look, I know you're not really into answering random questions from people that you don't know, but that's actually a sign of, I don't know, it's cool. It's a sign of independence. It's one that, it's awesome. It reminds me actually of a, well, a very cool person. Let's just say, if you like her, you're freaking awesome. All right, but anyway, I had a question about how different attitudes can like affect different types of people in a relationship. 
Like, you're single, you're in a relationship, married, what's the deal? And you've had like a long-term boyfriend before, right? So now I'm just moving, right? Moving into a uh, deeper style of rapport, but it's all based on, man, I saw this unique quality that reminds me of a friend. And if you are like that friend, you're an awesome person. Okay, so very, very cool. We want to emphasize that unique quality. And if you look at the buffers or you look at the compliments, they're really actually going for that unique quality as well. But here they're just a little bit more direct. Okay, speaking of direct, a direct opener is, uh, look, you're really attractive. I wanted to ask you something. Okay, mainly because I think you're, look, you're a great looking girl, but it would be an insult to just look at you for that. Like, the most attractive qualities about a woman, I think, are a little bit deeper. So let me actually ask you this. Are you, are you like an open-minded person? Not just how everybody says they're open-minded, but truly. All right. So now I'm starting to move my qualifiers that way. She could say yes or no. She could say she doesn't understand. All this sort of stuff. But I want to change the playing field in that transition, you know, and actually take advantage of the resistance that, that I get, you know, that slight hiccup right when you open and use it to, man, build some insane rapport. Because look, if you can get that rapport, you can get a date. If you can get a date, you can get a kiss. If you can get a kiss, you can get a close. Awesome stuff. So let's review here. Intent equals resistance. Whenever we show intent, we're going to get resistance. But resistance isn't bad. It means we're actually in the right place. And especially when we start working on sexual escalation, you want resistance. It's awesome because you can just use it to swing back. Yeah, man, you can use it to actually get her sexual and get her sexually free. It's awesome. It truly resistance means that you're not only going to get laid, but you're going to liberate. This woman's going to feel liberated and have amazing sex. So in a social component, when you get resistance, it's the building of that tension. If we just know how to alleviate it, we're going to catapult ourselves further into a conversation and connection with her. Now, also transitioning what we just learned here, these three transitions, is the first step of releasing that sexual tension so that she can be more of a woman. Okay, We open, people are superficial. Well, within 10, 15, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, you're starting to, to break that down and get her to show her real femininity. And that's where you can really qualify her, man. It's, it's an amazing thing. So... This transitioning, the first part of resistance. And then one last thing, let's go over what is Formula 69. It is how we are showing, taking who we are in a very simple way, how we can meet somebody, how we can build a connection, build some rapport. That rapport will help us get a date, how we can structure that date in the right way and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then get that kiss, get that physical escalation and move into seduction. How? So that we can get a 60% effective rate. That means the people that we talk to and we connect with, if we want to move things to sex, you know, and this is the right situation, you know, if we build a connection with somebody and let's say she's engaged with somebody and just it's you don't want to go down that road or she's just really locked in or whatever, man, if you have somebody that's single and available, man, I'd actually say you do better than 60%. So cool stuff. Let's study this transitioning stuff. Uh, get ready for the rapport stuff, which is even better. And of course, look, for you new Venusian artists, we're changing this thing, man. We're evolving. It's becoming this awesome, awesome thing. I'd encourage you to check out MD360. That's really where you learn to do this stuff in depth, talk it over, do 15 hours of calls per week with the guys that have been doing this for years, man, and have so much experience working with me and just get a lot of, a lot of coaching from me directly. And then even more content, which is more thorough than this. Um, if that is not something that you can do, and I would encourage you doing the full service of that, not the automated one, then I would look at the, you know, also the Venusian arts VIP section, great stuff, just amazing content. It's scheduled out just like in this cool little plan. And Hey, if you're looking to take it to the next level, we got workshops too. Uh, if you want to do mine, they're in Austin. They're amazing. There's three day ones. There's five day ones. And, uh, they do some pretty awesome stuff. Okay. So that being said, let's get ready for the next video. Practice this stuff. If it doesn't make sense to you, practice the stuff in the opening video and if you get to a functional level with this where you start getting like, you know, some consistency with your open rates and transitioning, that means you're ready to dive into the rapport part, which is the next video. All right. Thanks for watching.